the plain deterministic RSA encryption scheme works by first creating two large random prime numbers P and Q. With these two prime numbers, then both a public key as well as a private key can be calculated with the public key consisting of a modulus n and an exponent e and the private key consisting of a number d. Based on the public key, a plain text p can be encrypted into a cipher text c by calculating p to the power of e modulus n. Based on the private key, the cipher text c can then be decrypted back into the plain text by calculating c to the power of t modulus n. Generating large prime numbers is involved and usually conducted by randomly sampling an odd number of a sufficient size and then using the Miller-Rabin primality test to check if the sampled number is indeed a prime number. This is repeated until a randomly sampled number is indeed a prime number. The public key is then easy to calculate as the modulus is simply the product of the two prime numbers and E is often set to 65,537, which satisfies the condition present for the exponent E to be relatively prime to the product of P minus one times Q minus one. The calculation of the private key is then more involved as the private key D is the multiplicative inverse of the exponent E, but fortunately, this can efficiently be calculated by making use of the extended Euclidean algorithm. How I set out to implement this RSA encryption scheme from scratch myself can now be seen in the following demonstration. I decided to implement an RSA encryption scheme with RSA keys of length 2048 bits, which is the nowadays recommended minimum size for RSA keys. For this, two prime numbers of an appropriate size needed to be generated, which I delegated to a yet to be implemented function. Having these prime numbers at hand, I calculated as specified by RSA, the modulus n of the public key as the product of the prime numbers and the exponent e of the public key I set to 65,537, which is a common and secure practice nowadays. Next one up was the calculation of the private key d, which I also delegated to a yet to be implemented function. Having the public and private key calculated, I then proceeded into an encryption stage where the encryption of a plain text into a cipher text is again handled by a function left for later to implement and then proceeded to complete this RSA scheme by decrypting the cipher text back into a plain text by making use of a decryption function also left for later to implement. Of course, the RSA encryption scheme must be sound, so the plain text recovered at the very end must be the same like the original plain text. Once this driver was created, I then proceeded to implement the encryption function, 
which really is just the calculation of the power of the plain text to the exponent within the field given by the modulus, for which I first had to turn the plain text byte string into an integer. Also, the decryption function was not too involved with the plain text recovered by calculating the ciphertext to the power of the private key D within the field given by the modulus. The plain text returned is then the byte string representation of the recovered integer plain text. With these two short functions implemented, the next function to be implemented was the generation of the prime numbers, which I surely deemed worthy to be dealt with in a lesson of its own.